Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe. Shout out to all my students. I hope you're doing well today. It's a beautiful sunny fall day. It's like an Indian summer day here in Chicago and we're working our way through the fall semester of 2020. It's been one of those semesters as everybody knows but it's not going too bad. It's going pretty well. Today we're going to look at Galapagos. Now I have an in-depth video on Galapagos and if you're not familiar with Galapagos it's an evolutionary solver that you can do some optimization with in Grasshopper. <clears throat> and if you're not familiar, I encourage you to go back and search up my uh, video on Galapagos. Today we're going to look at extending that to something called data record so we can record that data. So, for example, if I go over to this file here, I'm just moving this number slider and I'm going through all of the Galapagos iterations. So all the Galapagos iterations have been recorded and they're in this number slider, so to speak and I'm just going through those iterations and then I can select from those iterations. Alright, before we jump into the tutorial, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please click on the big red block with subscribe. Click on the bell to receive all the notifications. There's something here for everyone, I promise you that. Also, if you haven't connected with me on Instagram, go ahead and do that. My Instagram handle is Alfonso underscore Peluso and uh, recently I finished a half marathon that was a lot of fun first race that I've done in person uh, since the pandemic started um, but I've been posting a lot of student work and I've been getting a lot of good feedback on the student work so connect with me on Instagram <clears throat> All right, let's get started. So this is a definition that I used recently to look at kangaroo pressure. And uh, I'm going to go to the very end of this definition here. I'm just going to draw a vertical, not so straight line here. Okay. I could copy paste one of the other ones, but it's not as fun as making a new one. All right. Okay, so this is going to be, I'm going to add a scribble here. This is going to be the Galapagos portion of this. Okay. Make that a little bigger. All right, so what we have in the very end is... Uh, we have this mesh object here that you see now highlighted in green and I'm gonna find the area of that. So I'm gonna use an area capsule. Go ahead and plug that in. And I'm gonna use a panel and that will <clears throat> tell me what that actual area is. I think this is in feet. It's a pretty large, pretty large object. Uh, should be able to see. I guess I'm not seeing the bounding box on that yet. Let's add a bounding box. Okay. Because I want to get the the area of the bounding box that this object fits within. So I'm going to plug this in here. And there you see the bounding box and then plug that in there. Okay, now we see that bounding box. Okay, so everybody at home sees that too. All right, so now for Galapagos, I'm just going to go back in and under utilities here, I'm going to choose Galapagos. Or you could double click and type in Galapagos. So Galapagos has a fitness, something that you're looking for the minimum and maximum of. And in this case, it's going to be the area. So I'm looking for the the minimum area. So when I I can't plug it in this way. I have to plug it in from Galapagos 
into the capsule. And then what's controlling the area are some number sliders that I can plug in here to the genomes. So there's going to be two of those. And those number sliders are on this random random reduction. So it's going to go through here and random reduction. Move that number slider. It's also going to go into the seed and shift the sh where those anchor points are. And it's going to try to solve for the, the least amount of area. And then we're going to record that data. Okay, so let's set up the record data. Okay, so here's our data recorder. I'm going to plug those in, those number sliders into that. I'm going to get another one. Plug this in. And I'm going to clear all the data by clicking on the X. Okay, so there's no data in here yet. The 5 of the 46 I've cleared out of that. Okay, now these two number sliders are not set as the genomes for Galapagos yet. So I'm selecting both of those and I'm going back over to the Galapagos and I'm going to right click on genome and choose selected sliders. Okay, so I'm just looking to see yeah, that it is selected those two number sliders. Alright, so now now is where I save because I'm about to run Galapagos. So I'm going to double click on the Galapagos capsule. I'm going to change this to minimize. I'm going to enable my runtime. And I'm going to set this for just one minute. One minute of optimization. Okay. I'm going to go over this. And this can be whatever you want. I'm just, just trying to save some time within the video. I'm gonna, we'll see how many it can actually iterate in the one minute. I'm going to go over to Solvers. I'm going to click on the first button here to display all genomes in the Rhino viewport. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Start Solver. So we see that's going through all the iterations in the Rhino viewport. Starting to display some of these here in Galapagos. And we'll just let this run. It's only going to run for a minute. Hopefully. So a couple things on the bottom while we're here. This is display all genomes. I could display the top 10% of the genomes. Again, it's trying to solve for minimum area. 25% of the genomes. 50 or all. Now I do have the ability to stop it. I could stop the solver at any time and that data is still recorded. So why don't we go ahead and do that. We'll stop the solver. Okay. Now one thing that I didn't do that's very important is I didn't change the solver and I just noticed it when it stopped. I didn't change the solver to a zombie solver. I still have the solver as a bouncy solver. And that's really important because this still bounces around. Let's, let's, uh, let's find my reset button here. It still, it still bounces around and that's not good when it's in Galapagos and it's trying to move between iteration and iteration. So what we want when we're working with Galapagos, we want this to be a zombie solver. So, so if I go to Kangaroo, this is really important. If I go to Kangaroo under main, I'm going to choose zombie solver. And I'm going to plug all my goal objects in 
and then I'm just going to continue with this one on down the path here. So I'm taking out the bouncy solver that's being taken out of the equation here. Okay, so let's let's clear the data that was recorded and let's try this again. Let's go on over here and we'll double click minimize, we'll enable this to run for one minute and we'll go over to solvers, I'm going to click on the first clock display all genomes in Rhino viewport and I'll go ahead and start the solver Okay, we still see what the bouncy solver is doing because it's still being displayed but only the zombie solver is going into Galapagos It's a lot of fun to watch this, isn't it? Okay, so this has gone through 10 iterations of it, so I'll go ahead and stop the solver. Okay, I'm going to go to display 10%. I'm just kind of curious. Click on one of these and reinstate. Click on one and reinstate. So these are some iterations of the minimum area that it was finding. Okay, so all that data has been recorded. So how many iterations did it go through? Let's let's go and find out. This has 600. So in 10 iterations, this has 668 values. 668 values. Okay. So what we're going to do is um, this data here, we're going to keep that data in there. We're not going to click on the X uh, or else it will get rid of that data. So the way that this works is this is a this is a list of data. So let's uh, let's take these out. Let's uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take these out. Data is still in there. Okay, the data is still recorded in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a list item. Okay, this is my list of data. I'm going to do that for both of these. This is my list of data. Now I need an indice. So I need an indice that goes all the way up to 668. So I'm going to double click 0 less than 668. That's going to have all my indices that were recorded. Now instead of instead of the reduction in the seed controlling the random anchor points, I can use the what Galapagos gave me because that data has been recorded. So this will get plugged into my reduction and this will get plugged into my seed. Okay, so now as I go through here these are the iterations from Galapagos and I can choose from the 668 or I could go you know back into Galapagos and choose the ones that were actually the minimum area but this gives me all the iterations at Galapagos because maybe it's not just a minimum area maybe it's a certain form that I'm looking for a certain aesthetic quality to it so I think this is really awesome that it can record that data That's pretty cool. Okay, is there anything else that I missed here? It's a pretty pretty simple tutorial. Alright, if you found this tutorial helpful, click on the like below. Leave me a comment. Tell me why you liked it. My head's going to pop up. Click on my head to subscribe to my channel. Click in the upper right 
and the lower left for some more videos on Galapagos and Grasshopper. I will see you on the next one.